Hey, this is Kevin Flurlage with the Flurlage Twins. Today we're going to do a video on how to create a table of contents for your visualization. We're going to look at how to do a static one, which I think will be a little bit more flexible, but we're also going to show you how to do a dynamic one where your charts will stay up to date. So let's get started. So you may have seen um, several months ago uh, a visualization that I did for work um, for our, um, a company called uh, Unifund. It's uh, got a technology arm named, called Recovery Decision Science, RDS. Well, um, I was asked to do a visualization on uh, unemployment. I kept working on that and working on it and working on it. And when I was done, I ended up with 18 different dashboards. So I had a little bit of a challenge on how to create the navigation system to navigate between those dashboards and uh, you know I didn't really want to put 17 buttons on every single dashboard to navigate to the 17 other dashboards so I opted to do a table of contents I've done something similar to this in the past and the concept isn't uh, that big of a deal but um, it was kind of um, uh, interesting for some people to see it and a friend of mine named Pawan he said he saw that and was like, wow, and he did it at work and uh, people went nuts. So his client really loved it. So I figured I'd show you how to do this and we'll do a, a again, we'll do a static one. We'll do a, um, a dynamic one. So this is the, the workbook. This is an unemployment workbook. This is on uh, the RDS Tableau public page. You want to check it out. So we have this um, table of contents. So it's just a image basically and if we put this in view if i click on an image i can go to the dashboard i got a little main page and next buttons but if we go back to the main page we can go to uh, a different chart so we have this really nice navigation system so we're going to build that really quickly um, i am first going to start off by going to the dashboard and i'm going to just export an image of it so if we go to dashboard export image we can save an image of the dashboard. I've already done that for four different dashboards. We're just going to act like we have four, not 18. Um, but I've already done that. And so we're going to create the little table of contents here. It's really pretty simple. Um, let's start with a vertical container. Change it to floating here. And I'm not going to get very precise with it. I am going to put um, four different horizontal containers in here. Let me change it back to top here. Hold the shift button, but... All right, I'm going to put four of them in here, and okay, I don't want to distribute them evenly, so we'll leave that. Um, let's make this, just for easy math, let's make it 600 tall. All right, and I'm going to make the height here 50 and the height here 250. What we're going to do is we're going to have images, we're going to have four images and a two by two row, oh, I did the wrong thing, and then we're gonna have some titles over it. So the ones that are 50 tall are gonna be the titles, and the ones that are 250 tall are gonna be the images. So we already have those images. What we're gonna do now is just drop in navigation buttons. So I'm gonna drop in a navigation button here and here. We'll distribute even within that container and another two of them here. Do the same thing. Here we're going to put some text boxes. Like I said, it's just going to be some titles. We'll center everything up and we'll say title for first dashboard. Probably should have copied that. I am more handsome than Ken. The idea, we would do the same thing down here. So we have some titles for our dashboards. Now all we got to do is change these things to navigation buttons. So our first one's going to go navigate to dashboard one. I just named them one, two, three, four. We're going to pick an image button. We're going to choose our first image. And we're going to apply. Pretty simple. So we'll do that for all these. And I set it up to be pretty easy. You know, sorry, I've got lots and lots of worksheets in here and lots of dashboards. Okay, that's two. Navigate to three. And we're going to put the three. And one more. Navigate to four. And pick image four. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, I don't see any like borders around here, so I think I'd like to put some borders in. So 
I'm just going to go to layout. We're going to put a border on that container itself. So we come to border here. We'll pick a thin border, make it maybe a light gray. And we could leave it like that. It looks pretty good, but I'd prefer to do some padding. We will put in padding. I'll uncheck this. Just some left and right padding. So I'm just going to guess. Not 580. I'm going to guess 80. And yeah, we're pretty close. Maybe 90. Maybe 100. Something like that. We're close. So we have this nice little framed button. So now if we we click on this, we went to our um, we went over to our, our dashboard. So it looks like it might be linked to something a little bit goofy, but so now we have uh, the first piece of our dash our, of our table of contents. So all we gotta do is replicate that for these other four. So really nice technique, like I said. Um, a really clean way to allow your users to, and your clients to navigate a dashboard with a, lot, a workbook with lots of different dashboards. Now, there is one downfall of this uh, is these are just images. So if we take a look at my original, uh, we'll look at, um, I think it's this one. This looks like it looks at initial claims by month, unemployment claims by month. And this was uh, this image was taken uh, probably in late March when I first developed this dashboard. And in fact, you see this peak here. And over time, let's say three years from now, this image is still going to look like the most recent value is, is that high peak of initial um, unemployment claims. So we obviously don't want uh, that. That may be an issue. That may not. Um, we may need to just put a warning on the dashboard, which I typically do is put a warning and say these are static images. They are not up to date. Uh, click to you know to go to the actual dashboard um, but if we wanted and we wanted these to update with our data we can make it dynamic and I'll show you how to do that so ultimately what we're going to do is build mini dashboards um, or, yeah mini dashboards within containers on this on this uh, table contents page so let's just let's just give it a go so let's do another vertical container like I said, not going to be precise. Put a horizontal on that, another horizontal on that. So we got four. We got two and two. That's all we're going to do here. And I have these individual sheets um, right here. We've got uh, the these four different sheets, and these four different sheets are the main sheet on each of these dashboards. So we have this sheet here, this sheet here for our map. We have the map. So what I've done is just uh, uh, have those four different sheets. And what we can do is start to build many dashboards in these in these containers. So I'm going to just kind of do that, that, that. And it looks awful right now. So let's distribute everything evenly. Now we got to do just the individual containers. Yeah. it again up here in that container and now I got this little floating thing I got to get rid of all right so now we have this sort of dashboard now um, you can see I already done some work on this I'll kind of show you how I did that so um, so let's just do it with this one I am going to do it here so we have this title here. I'm going to edit this title. I'm going to make it white. I'm going to center it, maybe make it 12. And then if I format this title, I can make it purple just to match this. So I could do that on all these ones, and we have these sort of nice little frames. Now, I probably do some padding to get these things. Maybe we'll start with a, with a border. Then maybe we'll just do some some big padding there. We could do something similar here. I have no idea how much padding we did, but I can eyeball it. So as you can see, we're starting to have this sort of uh, table of contents. Maybe a 44. And I'm not going to clean them all up, but we have this sort of table of contents. The nice thing about this is we built these sort of mini dashboards. As I update my data, these dashboards are going to update. So you can see this is updated to the, well, it's hard to tell here, but 
uh, it's updated to um, the end of July. Unlike the beginning page, the original table of contents, it's not updated since um, April. Now, there's downfalls. These charts look awful big. You're not seeing a lot of information. The map looks great. These are kind of small. This is kind of small with this, this kind of oversized dot, so it looks a little silly. There are some things we can do. We could certainly fit it to entire view. Maybe that works. Maybe that doesn't. Um, but we can do a little bit of work. So really, it's kind of up to you what what you uh, what you think's best. Um, one thing you can certainly do is you can duplicate your sheets. I don't really love duplicating sheets, um, but you could duplicate your sheets so that uh, you can design those sheets specifically for this table of contents. Uh, make the the point smaller. The the you can get rid of the headers and things like that. Or um, but you can kind of edit it for exactly for the table contents if you really, really need it to be dynamic. All right, so now we have four charts on our dashboard, but we need to turn this into a table of contents so that I can click on one of these charts and it actually goes to that dashboard. So we can do that with navigation buttons. So if I float a navigation button out here over this chart and make it as large as the chart, I can set that navigation button to navigate to dashboard one and then go pick image. But instead of picking one of these images here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a transpar transparent image. And if you didn't see, I had a blog post on this a few weeks ago, 14 use cases for transparent images and shapes. This uh, kind of the concept is, is similar. And so I'm going to pick this transparent image. You can download a transparent image from that from that blog post as well, or just draw it in PowerPoint. I'll pick that transparent image and hit OK. And since it's transparent, the chart shows through it. But this uh, transparent image is actually a button. So if we put this in full screen, we can click on this and it navigates to that dashboard. All right, so we would just build those transparent navigation buttons for all these, and we've got ourselves a dynamic table of contents. To be honest, I prefer just doing something like this. Use the images, uh, put a warning on there somewhere that's uh, big and bold. I don't, actually don't have one on here. I should add it. Uh, but a warning somewhere big and bold that says that these are static images and they haven't been updated since X um, month in year. All right, that's all I got for you. If you want to check out more blog posts and more videos, check out our website at flurlidgetwins.com. Thank you.